Hey guys, it's me, the Archfiend, the guy that usually has a ceiling fan in the background of every single video he makes. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about, because it's not really a virtue, but it's something that I feel is very virtuous, and that is the ability to ignore. And more and more now, when I'm creating these videos, I, I you know, I tried to make the titles ambiguous, and I said before it's kind of like, um, paying homage to like moist critical and the way he leaves an ambiguous title um, but i'm doing it more so more for just the few of you that are remaining and the many of you that i see commenting here that have been here and leaving stuff saying like you know i started watching when i was in middle school and now i'm a father with a child and hopefully you didn't knock up your girlfriend like when you're a freshman in high school or something like that but anyway um I, I feel almost like a father figure to a lot of you guys that have watched me through the years because I'm thinking back, I'm like, man, some of these people have watched me for over 15 years. Like, that's nuts. That's like more than half half of your lives in some cases. So I I feel almost motivated to to do more wor worldly advice type videos. And that's what I'm trying to do here today. And the whole notion of ignoring how I've applied it to my life, how you can apply it to YouTube, uh, just how in generally I've gotten by on just ignoring things to how I feel make my life better. And again, this may not be something that you want to do for yourself or whatever, but Hey, uh, I'm just telling you the road that I've walked down in life. Um, now, when it comes to ignoring, um, it, it's it's not exactly a concrete thing because obviously there's times in life you can't ignore things. It's not like saying like, you know, your dad is a terrible drunk, just ignore him and the problem will go away. It's like, no, there might be nights you want to ignore him because you don't want to you know catch him on the wrong night and get the belt or the, the hand to the back of your head or something like that. Um, but it's like choosing to ignore and not ignoring to help benefit something. Um, I'm getting a little mixed up in my words here. Uh, there, there, there's basically two ways to approach ignoring is what I'm getting at. Um, actively ignoring and doing so to make your life better is what I want to, uh, stress the most here. Now. I'll start off with things on a on a YouTube level here. Um, two people that I honestly don't want to make videos about anymore. In fact, I made a video about this person just last week. Didn't put his name in the title. Didn't mention his name one time in the entire video. Uh, Boogie2988. Uh, I made a video mocking his please help me video uh, where he, he begged his audience for money. Congratulations, he got money from his audience. They're dumber than him, but that's that's aside from the point. Uh, the fact that I made a video like that and it was a clear mocking of his video that he made, and people, some people in comments were like, like, oh my gosh, what did what did Dark Side Phil do now? I can tell you're mocking him. The fact that I don't say anyone's name in the video and people watch that without knowing the backstory and assume it's about DSP. Like, that goes to show you how far someone like Boogie2988 is messing up. When people who are mocking him and making a mockery of a video that they made, and they think it's about DSP, you really should examine what you're doing. But here's the thing, and here's where the ignoring comes along. Because someone like, like, like Boogie2988... DSP, EDP even, they're addicted to the internet. They don't want a life that isn't the internet, that isn't the money they get from the internet, that isn't from the attention they get from the internet. So all you can do at this point is by mentioning them, addressing them, and yes, I know I'm obviously mentioning them here. I have to to make the point. Uh, all you can do at this point, if you don't like them, mentioning them in any way, shape, or form is just giving them even just a monicum of what they want, even if it is complete negativity towards them. They're addicts. 
You're giving an addict what they want, even in the slightest way. You know, it's like giving a gambler a penny to gamble with. If they get desperate enough, they will gamble with that penny. They would like $100, but if they have a penny, they'll gamble with that penny. Because it's a little something of what they want. As minuscule as it is, it's a little something of what they want. They want attention. They want their names coming out of your mouth. So that's why, and like, you know, I still make posts, um, uh, community group posts, like on Facebook, uh, showing you what uh, Boogie 298 is doing and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not like I'm going to say, oh yeah, look at, take me as an example. I don't mention these guys at all. Like, no, obviously I mention them. And I even talked about EDP during my um, last football stream, I think it was, it might've been two football streams ago, whatever. Um, where I'm saying like, you know, these guys aren't going to go away. <laughs> They're going to hang on to whatever ounce of fandom they have left. So you could either get tremendously frustrated that someone like EDP keeps popping up on a social media platform, keeps getting money, that Boogie keeps asking for money from his stupid fans, and any of these people ask for money from their stupid fans, and they get it, or you can just ignore it. Because people like them are declining in popularity. They're not, they're not going to reach the mountaintops that they reached before. Boogie2980 is not going to be the person that's getting a hundred thousands of views per videos or millions of views per video like he used to. That video he made asking for help was the first time one of his videos cracked a hundred thousand views in five months. He used to not go three videos in a row without cracking a hundred thousand views let alone five months. And if it wasn't for the whole Frank Hassel incident, he wouldn't have had those videos because that's the last time he made videos that cracked six, six figures. Anyway, so people thinking that, you know, EDP is going to be shamed off the internet or just be like too disgraced to show his face or anything like that. If you're going to be frustrated that... <laughs> Um, if I could step off into a minor tangent because something that Boogie said in one of his, uh, in his last video or second to last video, um, thanking his fans for the money and saying how, you know, he can't get a job. Um, you know, he's tremendously obese. He's incapable of working. He's a felon, which by the way is a lie. He signed a plea agreement in that if he violates his two year, um, parole period or, um, uh, not parole. Um, why am I forgetting the word probation period? Um, then he gets the felony stuck to him. He has, I think it's called like a floating felony in the legal business, legal terms. I, I forget the exact terminology. But anyway, it's a felony that isn't formally issued unless you violate your parole given a certain time frame parameter, which he got two years of. So when, uh, uh, if they do any sort of background check on Boogie when he applies for a job, that felony will not show up. It will show up, however, if he violates parole, then yeah, then he has a point to make. Um, and the whole thing of him being like, you know, too mentally ill to work or whatever and stuff like that. You can't get behind a wheel of a car and do DoorDash. Do you know what I did during COVID when, when I got kicked out of my job? Well, not kicked out of, it's not like I did something wrong or anything like that. But when COVID shut my job down, I delivered for DoorDash. I don't remember them doing any sort of background check. Maybe they did internally or whatever, but I... I didn't even list anything as, as job references. And that's another thing Bookie said. Like he, he said like, you know, my last job was working um, 11 years ago for some lady who's not even alive anymore. I'm, I'm like, okay, well, DoorDash did, didn't even care if I had a job. It was, and it's a thing where someone like me, and again, not to flex, makes significantly way more doing my real job that I've had for the last 13 years than I did on that little stint with DoorDash because I just, I didn't know what to do in life without working. Now I know not everyone has my same mentality and approach to life, but when, when Corona hit and my job was shut down and I was home for a month and then another month, I'm like, I just, I can't do this. I just, I can't be home. I have to work. I have to have some sort of job. I have to have some sort of satisfaction. I was still getting unemployment and the, and the money from the government and stuff like that. I have to have some sort of satisfaction that I'm earning money. Like that's just me. I, I just, I, I had that because that, that's the only way I knew ever since high school 
when I started working for a super fresh supermarket my junior year or sophomore year, I want to say, yeah, sophomore year I started there, uh, before I was even driving a car, I was working at a supermarket and I've been working ever since. Like, I just, I don't know any other way of life other than working for a living. And then, you know, Corona passed and, you know, it's not like I go like, oh my God, I can't believe I had to go. I had to sink to the level of being a DoorDash delivery driver. Like, no, I was earning a living. I was fulfilling myself. I felt good doing that. I was making an, e an, 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 an easy, uh, honest living, you know? I mean, not necessarily easy, just an honest living. I meant to say earnest, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I have no shame in that, that I, I did something that would be seen as like a grunt line level of work that is a significant step down from the job that I got temporarily outed from, from coronavirus. And it's it's funny that Boogie mentions the whole, like, you know, is there a job for a convicted felon like me? Like, yeah, there is. Even if you did actually have a felony arrest or even if you just got a jail. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, the company I work for that I got my job back after coronavirus, quote unquote, passed. Um, they have a crew that comes in every single night to clean the parking lot, empty the trash cans outside. And I always used to wonder for years because they weren't part of the janitorial services. We call it the EVS department in the building I work in. Um, they weren't part of the EVS crew that cleans everything in the building. And I was like, are they not like allowed to go out in the parking lot and sweep up trash and empty the trash cans out there and stuff like that? And like, I was like, that's kind of weird. So I, I talked to one of the foremen of the this cleanup crew this third party cleanup crew that uh, that that comes to my job and i said to um said to them i was like you know i just got a question for you why why is why does my company hire you guys to come here and and we have an evs crew like you know i'm not, I'm not trying to say you should be out of a job or anything like that but i'm just i'm just curious and he said they are part of a work release program of convicted felons he even explained to me that he had just got out of jail for armed assault, for armed robbery, and everyone else on his crew was along similar circumstances. They're either, you know, on probation or they, they worked a plea deal, something along those lines, but they got in trouble with the law, and that's how everyone in that, that, that crew operates. And he said companies hire a lot of people like him. And I'm sure some of you out there, you probably, someone's going to chime in with an example. Again, my company actually does this as well, or they outsource a, a phone reception service or something like that. But anyway, um, companies will hire groups of people like that and they use it as a tax write-off, but they pay them the same amount that they would pay their own janitorial services to do the same job as in the example of what the cleanup crew at my job does. And so it's, it's a benefit for the company. If you're, if you're helping to employ people that can't, you know, have the, the widest range of job choices because of the errors in their life, uh, you could pay them the same as you would someone working for your company, but the government is going to give you a kickback and say, Hey, you know, you helped out these people, you know, that are in a bit more of a bind as far as finding a job goes Here's a little extra back. Use this as a tax write-off. So I'm like, I, I was like, I think that's fascinating. And he said how um, the foreman of the cleanup crew said how, you know, he works for an umbrella company that you know does things like you know, uh, like a lot of people that come out and work release, uh, get set up with this company and they'll they'll work from home, answering phones and doing hotel reservations like booking like if you call to like to book a reservation and what whatever you know part of the country that chain is in so it's like you know you don't even necessarily have to be able to get out on your feet and sweep with a broom or something like that you could even if you're a convicted felon you could sit at home but boogie is gonna tell his fans it's like you know i can't even get a job because i'm a felon you know I'm, I'm not even able like you're not able to pick up a phone the jobs are out there and that's the thing. He's going to tell you, like, you know, huh, uh, you know, good luck finding that job because it's not even out there. It's like, have you even tried? So anyways, people like Boogie 
and your EDPs are like, well, at least EDP actually tries and gets jobs. Like, you know, he's at least photographed being um, a security guard at a CVS at one point after he got busted for being a filthy pedo. Um, so at least someone like EDP will try to earn an honest living, you know, uh, but someone like, like Boogie, he's not even going to try. So it's like, you're going to just continue to be angry about that? Or would you ignore it? Now, I could, uh, you know, hey, I, I, I'm all here to tell you that I will consume <laughs> content that is made about either one of these guys. You know, color me a hypocrite for that. But me personally, like going out of my way to make content, ripping them down. It's like, God, I wanted to just, just, just make a video just figuratively strangling Boogie when I saw that just reply to his fans about all the money he received and just the excuses for not working and like you know i guess i kind of did make it here but it's like i don't want to give that satisfaction to him because i know it will be satisfying if i made a video about it and made thousands of views and as, as small time as i am here when i still put a big name in the title it'll still get thousands of views here Look at some of the videos I made in the past about Boogie or, or James Rolfe and stuff like that. They still get thousands of views. Make a more ambiguous title video, it's lucky to get a thousand views here. But again, I, I, I'm here to try and thank you guys that have stuck around. The people that are willing to click on the video and not search it out or have the algorithm recommend it to you because they think the title is something that you'd want to watch because it's about a topic you would like. Again, all you guys that have clicked on my videos and continue to do so because it's in your subscription feed, I'm here for you guys anymore. I, I, I'm not here to, to, to want to make money. Like, obviously, I'll put ads on things. It's not like I don't like making money off of my stuff. It's just I don't really want to. I don't need to. I like it, but I don't necessarily want to. I don't, I don't know. It kind of sounds oxymoronic, but whatever. Um, I'll take whatever I'll get off my videos nowadays, but anyway, um, and the whole ignoring thing, look, there's, there's times we come across people and I, I'm pretty much done the whole YouTube ends of ignoring things here. Um, because I, I've even said before how, you know, I, I, I try to ignore as much of the salacious claims that are thrown against me. Because it's like, you know, what can I say? Like, if you can't prove, like, you didn't do something and someone claims you did, like, okay. Like, the time someone said that I I, I killed my ex-girlfriend. Okay, I, I, what, what do I do to prove that that didn't happen? So what's, what's making a video about it and bringing it up or claims even remotely close to that? Or that I had some sort of underage affair while, I'm, while I was dating my wife at the time and stuff like that. Like, okay, how do I prove I didn't do that? Why give the people the satisfaction, the time of day of making a video about it? So yes, there's always been a level of ignoring that has always taken place here over things that are said about me. And how I've extended that through to just my general life, it's just like, um, like, just I see road rage and everything on the news and stuff like that. And I go, my God, if people would have just ignored what ever frivolity led to that circumstance things would have just gone on their way i got cut off in traffic i laid on the horn on that guy and then an argument ensued and then one of us ended up dead like okay is being macho and sticking up for yourself or honking at that person because you got offended because nothing happened other than he cut you off or would it have been wiser to just ignore? And it's not saying I never honked my horn in a car and an idiot, you know, looking at his cell phone or whatever. But man, anytime I have, I've looked back and I said, I could have just ignored that. And I always self-check myself in times where I go like, I gave that person attitude, but I really should have just ignored that. Because in the heat of the moment, stupid things happen. Oh, I was macho. I was sticking up because my girl was with me. Oh, shut up. Move on. Does your girl really care about what that guy said to you or something? Is it worth really being macho and getting a fight over? 
Like, okay, I understand there's lines that get crossed or whatever. But half the times I see people get into arguments over the dumbest shit. Just ignore it. So yeah, one of, one of the, that, that's one of the biggest things that I have gotten through in life. And it doesn't have to be someone saying something, so, saying something insulting. Often you'll get in an argument over political beliefs. Over, is the moon landing fake? Is, is, uh, is, I almost said Rush Limbaugh, is, um, oh my God, Jones, what the hell is his first name? Why am I, why am I forgetting the Sandy Hook hoax, hoax guy? Jones. Damn it. Can't think of his first name. Jiminy Christmas Trees. He just got sued for $985 million yesterday. Alex Jones. Jesus. Uh, you know, <clears throat> is Alex Jones getting wrongly persecuted for just telling the truth? Is the moon landing fake? I don't care. Is Sandy Hoax... <laughs> Sandy Hoax. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a Freudian slip. Is Sandy Hook a hoax? I don't care if you think so or not. I know I personally think, and I'm laughing at Alex Jones, if you want to know how I feel about it. Anyway, Sandy Hoax, Jesus Christ, did I forget, did I just forget, did I just create a new terminology for that? Anyway, um, I don't care if you voted for Trump. I don't care if you worship Hillary Clinton. I ignore that. You sit there and you tell me about it. Okay, I'll sit there, I'll nod my head, I'll be like, yeah, that's crazy, I don't know, I don't really follow politics that much, I don't know. Like, if it's a family member, like, I have, I have an aunt who has a framed picture of Donald Trump that's the first thing you see in his how in, in her house. It's nice, like what you did with the wall there. Am I going to acknowledge it and go, oh, God, why do you have that there, seriously? You put that up in your house? Ignore it. Until her beliefs, their beliefs, your beliefs, whatever beliefs get in the way of interfering in someone's life in some sort of capacity that is either slowing productivity or increasing negativity, then what's the point of acknowledging it? Just ignore it. Your neighbor has 10 Trump sides in his yard. Who cares? Look in the other direction. So anyways, my philosophy in life is ignore it. Now, have I given my opinion on a number of things? Obviously. Have I stated my side of any sort of opinion? Obviously. But when it comes to actually doing something productive in my life, going through my daily life, you could say making a video is part of your daily life, so why aren't you ignoring every single thing there? Why are you choosing a side of any issue here, Archfiend? Because I just like talking to people here. This isn't something like none of you are going to slow down my daily life. Nothing you guys could say here. Like I'm not just going to be doing something driving along and be like, oh my God, I can't believe that son of a bitch slammed me for not liking Donald Trump. And I'm going to ups get upset to get distracted and like crash into the car in front of me. What I say here stays here. And any of the few times it distracted me in life, I've stepped back and said, hold on. What are you doing? Is this creating any sort of productivity in your life? Which is one of the reasons why I say to my wife, if there's any sort of argument, any sort of anything in the past that's negative, if dwelling on it in the future is having no sort of ramification on change in the past, I won't do it. I won't. I refuse to do it. I refuse to let my brain dwell on some sort of negativity from the past. I ignore it. Because what's done is done. I, I can't believe a mailman hit my car when it was parked out in front of my street when the car was five months old. I was so pissed when that happened. Do you think I dwell on that for a second? The fact that my car had over $10,000 worth of damage for just being parked in front of my street and get this, nothing happened to the mailman. He couldn't even get a ticket because a mail truck is federal property and local municipalities can't discipline them for that. How crazy is that? This is an actual thing that happened to me. 
Now, I'm turning up the volume here and showing you in the moment how angry I was when I'm like, the, you can't even give this guy a ticket? He turned the corner and hit a car parked on the opposite side of the road because it was around Christmas time and he was driving like a lunatic in a residential neighborhood. He can't even get a ticket? No. And my car got messed up from it. And you want to know the kicker about this? My insurance had to pay for the damages. E excuse me? My insurance has to pick up the bill for this? Now, granted, I obviously didn't pay for anything out of pocket. I didn't have to pay for a rental car or anything like that. Um, they even they gave me money for, I don't know, like, like a couple hundred dollars of inconvenience money. But the thing is, is like I have a five month old car that had a $10,000 collision to it. The resale value of the car is shot. It's done. I can't sit there and dwell on it. It's done. What, what am I going to complain at the police station? And they're going to be like, okay, we're, we're going to circumvent federal law and we'll give them a ticket. Like, would that make me feel better in any way, shape or form? Will that change what happened? No. I'm just giving you an instance in my life of a, a completely frustrating situation that happened to me. And when it was past that month of just everything happening from, you know, getting the car repaired and everything, I said, I'm on from it. And my wife would say, like, I just, that, that sucks. That sucks. I can't believe it's happening. You know, I haven't given him one thought since then. I don't care. Thinking about it and bringing any sort of negativity into my life from a negative situation initially does nothing for productivity. It does nothing for the now and the future. You can live and learn from it. I can say, hey, I'm never going to park on the street again. Okay, lesson learned. Never park on the street again. Done. I'm going to do nothing but take positive steps out of that negative situation. But the point being is, like, you know, it, it, it's not like you could say, like, oh, I could just ignore every single time my father beat me when he was drunk or my mother beat me when she was drunk or the grandparents that took me because my, my parents OD'd on heroin when I was five years old and then, then their, their parents abused me. It's like, okay, yeah. There's, there's negativity that is worth reflecting on and is going to scar you a lot more than my, the trivial event of my car getting hit by the mailman. Like, I get that. And I know people are going to be like, how am I going to ignore the severe trauma I had in life? All I could say is you could try. Try as much as Boogie doesn't try to get a job. And again, it's not going to make everything great or nice or correct or just make everything forgive. I forgive you, Dad. I've, I've ignored all the trauma you gave to me for the past 10 years. I can forget every single time you beat me in a drunken rage. Like, you know, I'm not expecting people out there to say stuff like that. But man, who cares if your aunt has a framed picture of Donald Trump and it's the first thing you see in her house? <clears throat> who cares if someone thinks Sandy Hook is an inside, or 9-11 is an inside job, or Sandy Hook is an inside job as well? Because Obama wanted to take our guns and stuff like that. All I could say is one of the biggest things that I've done to help get me through above and beyond. And why when I was getting a vasectomy that they took my blood pressure beforehand. And I'm in my 80s right now. Just kidding. Um, where am I? The doctor took my blood pressure. And he says... This has got to be the lowest pre-op blood pressure I have ever seen. And he's been doing vasectomies for 30 years. Or, well, he, he does more than vasectomies, obviously. But he's a urologist of 30 years. Um, and I'm like, yeah, thanks. He's like, he's like at your age, it's, it's unreal to see blood pressure this low. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't sweat the small shit. And I don't sweat the past shit. Don't sweat the past shit is what I can say most. You know, there's times where you can get angered in life and it's warranted to, to be angry. You know, I get angry that, that my kid keeps trying to stick his fingers in the light socket and pull the little protectors off. Because it's for his own good. Stop doing that. And you have to raise your voice to them. I don't like yelling at my kids, but you have to at some point because they have to know what they're doing is wrong. <clears throat> But 
But I mean, stress kills. And I don't know. I don't know why I realize that it's such an early point in my life, and it, it, it's it's weird that I I just I don't know why. Me of any other people, it's not like I've had such a significant amount of trauma that I had to shove behind or shove out of my mind. I've always had low blood pressure. You know, I don't have a lot of salt in my diet, but yeah, I mean, I like salt. But anyway, it's, it's much more than that. High blood pressure runs in my family with both my mother and my grandmother. I had very high blood pressures. <clears throat> Maybe it's from burping. I don't know. The point being is I've, I've, I just, I've always had this philosophy. Maybe it's because like when I was in school, I, I ignored the idiots. Like I just, I saw people and I'm just like, God, I can't wait to never see you again. I know it's a double negative, but and I'm talking about school, but I would just see people. I'm like, I'm like, boy, I can't wait to be out of school and never see you again. You dullard, you dullard, you dullard. <laughs> and I guess that's where it started from. I don't know. I just, I, if I could speak to you as a fatherly, a fatherly type figure to those of you that have followed me for this long, that are willing to listen to a video that is already 31 minutes, Jesus Christ. I seriously thought I was talking for like 12 minutes so far. Anyways, fatherly advice should be wordly advice that's long and lengthy. And anyway, write a book, Archfiend. Never. Anyway. The virtue of ignoring. It's something I've held near and dear to me because I feel it, it eats people up if you don't. If you sweat every damn thing that disturbs your life and then you dwell on it, I just don't see how that's a productive life to live. Anyway, hopefully this is a valuable half hour plus of your life that you have devoted to me. Thank you to all of you guys that have stuck around this long. I just, I, I just, I can't believe when I see comments of people and I'm seeing people that like, that I have known longer than my wife. I know I've said that before where it's like, Jesus Christ, I've seen you come in here since before I knew my wife and I feel like I've known her forever. Anyway, thank you guys. And if this is the worldly advice that you can apply to you and you imply in any way, even just partly, you just, it stopped you in one instance in your life where you're just like, oh, I remember the time Arch told me to ignore this. I'm going to ignore it. If one person ignored one more thing in their life because of what I said, I'll feel accomplished. That is all for our lesson today. Class is over. That is all.